Hi, it's Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com where we instantly improve the lives of families of critically ill patients in intensive care so that you can have real power, real control and so that you can influence decision making even if you're not a doctor or a nurse in intensive care. This is another episode of Your Questions Answered and in last week's episode I explained the five things you need to know if your critically ill loved one is in intensive care with a severe head injury or a traumatic brain injury. You can read, listen or watch to the, the update if you click on the link below this video. In this week's episode of Your Questions Answered, I want to answer one of our readers' questions, Michael from Seattle in the United States. Hi Patrick, my 25-year-old wife has been in intensive care for one month now with tracheostomy and she is still in an induced coma. The intensive care team wants to take her off the ventilator and they say that she may die. I'm at a loss and I don't know what to do. Can you help me and give me some advice? My wife has been in ICU with a tracheostomy for the last month and the doctors have said she has brain damage. What I want to know is how long will they keep her on ventilation for, as at the moment she cannot breathe by herself and they are not taking her off the machine as yet. Do you know how long she will be on the ventilator for and will it be a permanent thing? She also has little brain activity which is keeping her alive and she also has lupus as a pre-existing condition. Prior to her ICU admission she had a chest infection and felt unwell for a few days and then she had a fit or seizures which lasted for four hours before she got admitted into intensive care. The intensive care team is now saying that she has a hypoxic brain injury and that's why they want to stop ventilating her. Legally, is there a certain time that she can be on ventilation before they just turn off and let her go? Is there any way we can get her to another hospital in the condition she is in at the minute and have her treated there? Hi Michael. Thank you for your question. I'm very sorry to hear that your 25 year old wife is in intensive care with a tracheostomy. It sounds like she has been through a lot, especially with seizures, brain damage, tracheostomy and the lupus. There are a number of things you and your family have to consider before the intensive care team may suggest to take your wife off the ventilator. The issues you should consider are would a prolonged stay and treatment in intensive care increase your wife's chances of survival and recovery? If a prolonged stay in intensive care is increasing the chances of survival, what would your life, what would your wife's quality of life be? If your wife has brain damage, has this been confirmed with CT scans and or an MRI or with a neurologist? because generally speaking the intensive care team are not the experts for brain damage. It's usually the neurologists who diagnose brain damage. If brain damage has been confirmed, is it reversible or is it irreversible? How severe is her brain damage? Does your wife have any other pre-medical health conditions beside the, besides the lupus that may impede on her recovery? Do you think the intensive care team is reasonable in their outlook or do you think they are negative in their outlook? What is your gut feeling and how do you think your wife is dealing with her current difficult situation? Do you think she can beat the odds? Before the intensive care team is taking your wife off the ventilator there should be a weaning process that your wife should be going through. Find a related article here tracheostomy and weaning off the ventilator in intensive care. How long can it take? You can click on the link below the video in the, in the article. Also, if the intensive care team wants to take your wife off the ventilator and is taking the risk that she may die, they need to clearly discuss this with you and your family, explaining the risks associated with removing her ventilation. Also, if the intensive care team intentionally takes her off the ventilator and expects her to die. They again need to clearly follow their end of life or withdrawal of treatment policies and those policies often suggest that they need to have family approval before they take her off the ventilator. Don't be shy or hesitant to ask for those policies. 
I have also a, written a related blog post about the five questions you need to ask when the intensive care team is talking about futility of treatment, withdrawal of life support or about withdrawal of treatment. Click on the link to this article below this video. Also, you need to ask whether the intensive care team wants to free up their ICU beds because they have other admissions awaiting an ICU bed. If that's the case, the intensive care team often sells to the family that a withdrawal of treatment is in the best interest for your loved one, whereas in reality a withdrawal of treatment is in the best interest of the intensive care unit as they can admit a new patient once your loved one has died. You also need to ask if the intensive care team wants to stop treatment because they think that your wife's treatment n might not be financially viable for the ICU. Again, if the intensive care team thinks that other cases awaiting intensive care admission might be a better revenue stream, then they may sell to you and your family that a withdrawal of treatment is in the best interest for your loved one, whereas in reality a withdrawal of treatment is in the best interest of the intensive care unit. A transfer to another hospital could well be an option and many critically ill patients can get transferred in a critical condition to answer your question about transferring to another hospital. What you also can consider. In some countries, mainly in the United States, Australia, Germany, Austria and Switzerland, there are intensive home care services for long-term ventilated adults and children with tracheostomy available. Therefore, you may want to consider intensive home care, maybe even end-of-life home care or weaning of the ventilator at home. A lot more is possible at home than most people think there is. You can find more information at intensivecareathome.com.au If the intensive care team is doing their best, then a prolonged stay in intensive care may well be necessary. Find more information here about a long-term stay in intensive care. There is a related article where a reader had another question. My sister has been in ICU for 21 weeks with tracheostomy and is still ventilated. What do we need to do? Click on the link below the video in the written version of this blog. I hope that helps, Michael, and please let me know if you have any more questions. We also have more reports available such as the five things you need to know if the medical team in intensive care wants to limit treatment, wants to withdraw treatment or wants to issue an NFR not for resuscitation order for your critically ill loved one. And the big question is how can you leverage your level of power, influence and control while your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. You'll get to that all-important feeling of power, control and influence when you download your free Instant Impact Report now by entering your email below. In your free Instant Impact Report, you'll learn quickly how to get real power and real control and how you can influence decision-making fast while your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. Our free reports help you with in-depth insight that you must know once your loved one is critically ill or is dying in intensive care. Sign up for your free membership and download your free Instant Impact Report now. In your free Instant Impact Report, you'll learn how to speak the secret intensive care language so that the doctors and the nurses know straight away that you are an insider and that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care. In your free report, You'll also discover how to ask the doctors and the nurses the right questions, how to eliminate fear, frustration, stress, struggle and vulnerability even if your loved one is dying. You get five killer tips and strategies helping you to get on the right path to control power and influence in your situation. You'll also get crucial behind the scenes insight so that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care. And you learn how you need to manage doctors and nurses in intensive care and it's not what you think. Thank you for tuning into this week's episode of Your Questions Answered and I'll see you again in another update next week. 
Make sure you also check out our blog section for more tips and strategies or send me an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com with your questions. This is Patrick Hutzel from intensivecarehotline.com and I'll see you again next week in another update.